Hi, everybody. This is for the younger guys. Let's say you're a young guitarist, just starting out, first several years, and you'd love to have a nice American-made guitar, a Martin or a Gibson or a Taylor, but it's discouraging because they're all like two grand. Well, I got news for you. I got an option for you that's going to cost you a lot less. A wonderful American-made guitar. Stand by. Hi everybody, thanks for tuning in to the channel. I'm going to title this episode, A Young Person's Guide to Ovation Guitars. What kind of inspired this is, uh, as a school teacher, getting ready for graduation this year, I got uh, asked to play uh, with uh, some students to uh, do like a song uh, suitable for graduation. And we uh, did a number together and it was a lot of fun. And I showed up for practice at school one day with them, and I brought an Ovation guitar with me. I have two of these. I'll show you my, my 12-string in just a second. That's the one I showed up to practice with. And everybody went like, whoa, what is that thing? It's a different-looking guitar. You've probably seen them around. Uh, they're known as being the round-back guitars. Uh, my voice is coming into the, <laughs> the sound hole. So these, uh, the, the, it has a synthetic uh, back, a kind of a fiberglass back. And I was going to tell you a little bit about these instruments and why you should maybe strongly consider trying to snag one and add it to your collection. Let me give you a little background on these. In the 1960s, Vietnam War is going on, and uh, there was a company that made helicopter parts, like blades for helicopters, the radomes, that's the little, like the nose of the helicopter where the radar is inside there. And there, there's some different fiberglass parts used for that. Uh, the company that, uh, that did that, one of the companies was called Command Enterprises, K-A-M-A-N. And it was owned by a man named Charles Command. And uh, Charles was a, a lifelong guitar player, <clears throat> loved to play guitar. He even kept a guitar hanging in his uh, CEO's office. And uh, he was, as the Vietnam War was kind of winding down, well, orders for helicopter parts and stuff were, were starting to drop. And he's concerned about his company, maybe how, some way to diversify and take the skills and manufacturing techniques they've got to apply it to maybe making something else. He, he had to have a repair job done on one of his guitars, and he took it down to the Martin Guitar Factory in Pennsylvania. His factory was like up in Connecticut. So he drove down, took his uh, guitar down there, and they gave him a tour of the plant where they build the Martin guitars. And he was so impressed, and he was thinking like, wow, what if I could make guitars and, and, and use modern technology and stuff? So what he did is he made an offer to buy the Martin Guitar Factory, and they turned him down. They said, no, this is a family-run business. It's been in the family for over a century. So he went back with this idea, all inspired, like, hey, maybe we can make guitars. So he got this idea of taking the top of a guitar and your bridge and neck and everything and mating that to a synthetic back made out of the stuff they used to make helicopter nose cones out of. This is a material that can be chemically tuned to specific frequencies. So they started experimenting and making guitars and attaching the, uh, the, this, this product they called Lyracord uh, to the the back of the guitars and pretty soon they started getting really good sounding guitars <laughs> with deep basses, pleasant trebles, potent mid-range, and they found they could chemically tune the lyre chord to optimize those particular frequencies, the ones that were the most pleasing. So the Ovation guitar was born, and that became their signature thing of having this round back on them. So you've probably seen these in music stores, pawn shops, uh, maybe on TV, find somebody still playing them. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about some of the things that they uh, they came up with uh, as the, the in the 1970s. Everybody who was anybody, and particularly in live performance, was playing Ovation guitars. And I'm gonna tell you some of the things as to why they were doing that. So we mentioned the live record back and sides. The top of the guitar is Sitka spruce, like most guitars are made out of Sitka spruce. 
The bridge is made out of walnut. This is stained black. This is a particular finish that they made there. They painted these white. Uh, and uh, it's kind of a translucent white. You can see wood grain through this. It's a really pretty finish, very striking. But they made them in natural and sunburst and red and blue and all kinds of cool colors, which was really revolutionary for the time. They, they looked really great on stage. The lyra cord back is actually pretty comfortable to hold. It kind of curves up against your body. Uh, a lot of people say, well, don't they slide off your legs? No, they really don't slide off your leg. The uh, headstock had this unique design that was Ovation's trademark. But if you notice how the the, the uh, tuning machines are kind of staggered, they did that in order to not stress the wood and to get more of a direct pull off the, uh, the, the, the string so that your tuning stability was better. Uh, the neck is made out of five pieces of wood to prevent twisting and warping. That was a really strong, most guitars at the time had uh, tr truss rods in them, but what truss rod is only for the, the forward pull of the string. Uh, a neck can still twist over time and age. And so by taking different types of wood, they took uh, three pieces of mahogany, two pieces of uh, walnut. They laminated those together and made the, uh, the necks into uh, one single unit. Uh, on, now mine is because it's the black and white model, it's uh, painted black on the back there, but on the natural colored models you can see the, uh, the, 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 the uh, stripes, and the stripes are actually just the layers of wood that are layered together. Uh, I'll, uh, I don't know that you can see that on the sunburst on my, uh, my 12 strings of sunburst. I'll try to show you on there if, you can, if it'll show through. Uh, the, next, uh, the fingerboards of these guitars are made out of ebony. If you've never played an ebony fingerboard before, they are luxurious. Way more luxurious than playing rosewood or palfaro or some other more modern wood. Uh, ebony fingerboards is a, just a premium uh, thing that you'll find on premium guitars. The top Gibsons, the top Martins had ebony fingerboards. All Ovation guitars back in the day had ebony fingerboards. Uh, it's, it's a good, solid, uh, sh shiny, sleek wood. It feels great under your fingers. That's why I say it feels kind of luxurious. You get spoiled playing these. Neck radius on these was 10 inches. That's a little more rounded than you get in most modern guitars. Most modern acoustic guitars are going to be 14, maybe 16 uh, inches on the radius. They're a little more flat. And so the curve on this feels really good underneath your fingers. You. <laughs> style that sounds great pick style they're very punchy the strings on this guitar are probably a couple months old at this point still sounds great live. the bridge does not have bridge pins in it you don't have to mess around with those there are little slots that go through the bridge, so you get direct string, string pull, and it puts more torque onto the top to help it really produce a good volume. If you take a, 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 just an average guitar and put an ovation next to it, this guitar is substantially louder. It really projects the distance. If you're playing outside or in an unamplified situation, this guitar really punches through. Now, the... Uh, a lot of people say, well, they're just they're plastic guitars. No, they're, they're beautiful. Wood, uh, mahogany, maple, walnut, spruce. They're beautiful instruments. Extraordinarily well built. Now, why do I mention these? My students, when I brought my ovation to school, they were like, what is with that thing? I've never seen one of those before. This is why I'm telling you guys about it. This is for the young people. Old guys have all seen these. They remember watching, oh, you know, Jim Croce played these. John Denver played one for, for a little while. Uh, who else played them? Oh gosh, Peter Frampton played one. The, the band Heart played one. Uh, Glenn Campbell played them. Uh, a lot of English artists and stuff. Uh, these uh, were all over the place. Al Di Miola played one. Uh, Paco de Lugia played one, I think, for a while. Charlie Bird, jazz artist, it was one of their endorsers. Their list of, of endorsers was as long as my arm back in the 70s. 
why everybody played them was because they had a pickup system in them. They were the first guitars that had a built-in piezoelectric pickup system underneath the bridge. Unlike most modern systems, which usually has one piezo element underneath that gets translated out to your amp and you have to use a preamp and stuff to, to uh, uh, adjust it, Ovation had six. Each string had its own sensor. So that way, that string got isolated and then amplified, phase corrected with a little preamp. Uh, on, a, on piezoelectric uh, pickups, the unwound strings are usually significantly louder than the wound strings. Ovation balanced all that out. You could take one of these, plug it into uh, an amp, and they sounded amazing. Or into a PA system, uh, because they had a, 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 their own preamp built into them, you could run a really long cable length with one, 50 feet if you wanted to, you know, to get across the stage, so you could move around. Artists now in the 70s weren't stuck playing an acoustic guitar in front of a microphone. They could move all over the stage and get a beautiful, natural acoustic sound. The Ovation pickup system was probably the premier one for 20 years until you know other brands, Fishman and stuff, uh, Marcus Berry and others came along. Uh, it was the combination of the six elements and the preamp and have everything all built into the guitar so you didn't have to mess around with it. This particular model does not have the, have the, the pickup system, in it. it's straight acoustic, but I'm going to show you one in a minute that does hang tight. The guitar I just showed you a minute ago, that was an Ovation Balladeer. There were several models in the Ovation line. The Balladeer was their meat and potatoes most basic one, and they sold back in the day for about Three ninety nine to four ninety nine thereabouts, and another hundred dollars for like a molded case. And their cases were like really rock solid, molded, padded. They were just some of the best cases you could get. They had a custom balladeer, which was like the balladeer, except it had uh, a bound neck, and it had no, it did not. Excuse me, it did not have the bound neck. It had uh, uh, diamond shaped inlays in the fingerboard instead of the pearl dots. The uh, the next model up was the Legend. The Legend had a bound fingerboard and it had abalone uh, diamond shaped inlays. And then the Custom Legend, it had all of those features of the Legend, but it had a gold tuners and it had hand carving stuff that was into the, the bridge to make it really fancy. And the grade of the spruce went up from like A, double AA, A, triple A, quadruple A. Uh, they made some signature models like the uh, like the Glen Campbell uh, uh, models that were quite uh, popular at the time because Glen Campbell was a very popular artist. And then they made a couple of different 12-string lines. This is one from this is a 1977 or maybe early 78 uh, pacemaker. Let me get a, a soft pick. Here we go. <laughs> instrument. Slotted headstock. How cool is that? 11.8 fingerboard radius. It's a little bit flatter than the Balladeer and the six-string models, and the, the, but the neck width is just perfect on these. The depth of the neck is good. Super, super easy to play. The neck joins the body on the pacemaker at the 12th fret, which scoots the bridge back a little bit. That 12th fret arrangement gives you a more balanced sound coming out of the top and makes it a little bit more stable with the 12 string. It does have the volume knob here that tells you the pickup system is in it and if you look at the wider bridge here, the bridge, the, the bridge saddle is a little bit wider. This is the, the one that has the six uh, piezo pickups in it and there is your output jack there. So the uh Pacemaker also had the ebony fingerboard, the five piece maple neck. Oh, yeah, you can't see it. So, let me take a look and put this up here so you can see. There is your five piece maple neck. So, you can see how that's laminated together. This guitar is 45 years old on it. The neck on this thing is perfect, it's perfectly stable. It sounds and plays amazing. The action is low, it's fast, it's comfortable. It's a pretty amazing thing. If you are a guitar player and you're lusting after an American made, Gibson, Martin, Taylor, but they're out of your price range. 
and you listen to the Asian guitars and they just don't measure up. And I don't know why the case that, that is. That is just the way it is with them. They, a lot of them just don't sound as good as the American made uh, instruments. I don't know what we do different here in America that makes our guitar sound so good. But if you can find one, if you can find a 70s or 80s ovation that's still in good shape, snag it because you can find them for under a thousand dollars. This is an American made, made in Hartford, Connecticut. American craftsmen built this thing. This is the best of American technology at the time. They are amazing instruments and they, uh, they play beautifully. They are rugged. One of the reasons why uh, artists took them on the road with them was not only was the pickup system, but these things were rugged and they would take a beating. Uh, matter of fact, when I was in high school, I was in a music store that uh, was approached by Ovation to become a dealership. And they had a sales rep come out there and it was, you know, played some of the instruments and showed them off to us. And we were kind of thinking, oh, they're pretty impressive. And at one point in his demonstration, I don't know if this was part of the standard demonstration, but with something he came up with, it was a pretty bold move. He took an Ovation Legend, a, you know, an expensive instrument, and took that thing and swung it like a golf club and whacked the side of a wooden counter with it, hit the back of it. And the guitar just went, kawang, made this huge, awful noise. We were like, oh my gosh, he blew that guitar up or something. There wasn't a scratch on the guitar. It, it took that punishment. And we were going like, whoa, that thing's pretty amazing. And the owner of the store goes, oh, sold, I'll take a dozen of them. <laughs> and so uh, they, they were really roadworthy instruments. And that's why you saw a lot of people playing them. Uh, so if you're uh, in the market for an American-made guitar, but you don't want to spend a fortune, find an ovation. Uh, I love these guitars. I've played them for, for years and just recently got back into playing them after a long absence without one. And I'm so glad I've got the Ovations back in my collection. And if you're not careful, the price on these things is going to go up because they're going to get collectible as they, uh, as they get uh, older and age out and people become more aware of them. So if you can find one now, snag it. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. And to help me out with the algorithm there, and we'll be back with more content pretty soon. Thanks again.